Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a like up. Beloved Southern Charm Butler, Michael Kelkors, is allegedly near death and does not have much time left to live. He suffered a spinal cord stroke in 2021, which was devastating to fans and Miss Patricia Olchul. Yet he always appeared chipper on FaceTime and in stats with Patricia. So what is this new information? Keep reading for more details. Michael Kelkors was Patricia Olchul's right-hand man. He would drive her around so she could enjoy her favorite fast food, and he was the only person who could make a proper martini. Moreover, Michael put up with the antics of the Southern Charm Boys and did it with a giggle and a smile. Sadly, he suffered a stroke in 2021, which caused him to have to retire from his position and the show after season 7. He spent some time in Atlanta trying to rehabilitate with her son, Whitney Sutler Smith, stopping in to visit. Then, Miss Patricia shared Michael was headed to an assisted living facility in Florida. He would be near his family but still unable to churn out those martinas. Patricia tried to hire new butlers, but no one even came remotely close to Michael, so she had to FaceTime him in Season 9. She needed him to give specifics on how to make a proper martini, which he did. They have also reunited in person, but sadly, it seems that his time is coming to an end. According to Starcasm, an update was made to Michael Kalkors's Karen Bridge page. It started by talking about what a beautiful, selfless, and caring person Michael is and always has been. One time, he was a vet for one of Patricia's dogs and footed the bill for a stranger to the tune of $10,000 to save their dying pet. That is who he is, and now that he has been sick, the kindness has been reciprocated, but there was one part of the update that was heartbreaking. Though the final chapter could mean the last part of his life, it appears Michael Kalkors's body has been through too much due to the stroke. He has paralysis and has done his best, but it is not easy. When fans read this, they were immediately struck and broken. Michael, you are my favorite Bravo liberty of all time, sending you much love. Of course, if anything happens, Patricia Altschul will alert her followers. It would also likely show up on Southern Charm as he was such an integral part. For now, it is just heartbreaking to think of Michael not around. However, he brought so much love and joy, that is what everyone must hold close. What is your favorite Michael memory? Let us know in the comments below. Amanda has been a professional freelance writer for over a decade, holding both a BA and an MA. Her passions include animals, iced coffee, gnomes, summer, music, and Vanderpump rules. Michael Kalkors had long been a fixture of elegance and grace in the busting heart of Charleston, South Carolina. Known for his impeccable southern charm, he was the beloved butler to the Afterwind Harrison family, a lineage steeped in tradition and old-world manners. His life was a symphony of polished silver and hushed whispers, orchestrating every moment with precision. From meticulously folded napkins to the subtle art of a perfectly brewed cup of Earl Grey, Michael's presence was woven into the fabric of the Harrison estate. Yet, beneath the surface of this poised facade lay a man who had weathered storms of both fortune and fate. Michael had come to Charleston as a young man with nothing but dreams and a dapper wardrobe. Over the years, he had built a reputation not just for his service, but for his uncanny ability to anticipate the needs and desires of his employers. His knack for making guests feel as though they were the most important people in the world was unmatched. It was this very skill that would soon become a matter of life and death. It was a crisp autumn afternoon when the first tremors of Michael's near tragedy began. The leaves danced in shades of amber and crimson, the epitome of southern splendor. Michael had just finished arranging a display of heirloom roses in the parlor when he felt a peculiar tightness in his chest. It was subtle, almost imperceptible, but he brushed it off as fatigue from the day's activities. That evening, the Harrisons were hosting a grand dinner party. The estate was abuzz with activity. The aroma of roasted lamb and freshly baked bread wafted through the air, mingling with the soft strains of a string quartet. Michael, ever the picture of composure, moved through the front of guests with his usual grace. His heart, however, was a reluctant participant in the evening's festivities. As the night progressed, Michael's discomfort grew. His breaths came shorter, and he felt an insidious heaviness that made it hard to focus. He managed to keep up appearances, performing his duties with the same meticulous attention as always. But in the quiet corners of his mind, alarm bells were ringing. This was not merely fatigue, something was amiss. The pivotal moment came as Michael was serving a particularly exquisite tray of Hors d'oeuvres. His vision blurred, 
and the room seemed to spin. He steadied himself against the polished mahogany table, forcing a smile as he offered a tray to Lady Harrison. Her sharp eyes, trained to notice even the minutest deviation from perfection, caught the strain in his face. Michael, dear, Lady Harrison said with a note of concern, are you quite all right? He opened his mouth to reassure her, but the words caught in his throat. The room darkened around him, and he staggered slightly. Lady Harrison's gasp was the last thing he heard before everything went black. Michael awoke to the sterile brightness of a hospital room, his senses slowly returning to him. The beeping of machines, the faint scent of antiseptic, and the muted murmur of voices provided a stark contrast to the warmth and elegance of the Harrison estate. Dr. Collins, the esteemed cardiologist who had been called in, was standing by his bedside. Mr. Kelkors, Dr. Collins said with a reassuring smile, you've had quite a scare, you suffered a mild heart attack. Michael's heart sank, not just from the medical diagnosis, but from the realization that his beloved role, his livelihood, was now in jeopardy. The Harrisons had always been kind and generous, but he feared that this unexpected turn of events might jeopardize his position. Dr. Collins continued, Fortunately, it's a mild one. With the right care and lifestyle changes, you'll recover fully, but it's imperative you take it easy for a while. Michael nodded, his mind racing through the implications. The thought of being unable to serve the Harrisons, to step into his role with the same grace and efficiency, was almost too much to bear. But his concern was not merely for himself. It was for the destruction his absence would cause to the seamless rhythm of the Harrison household. During the following weeks, Michael was confined to his home, his world reduced to the quiet solace of his personal space. He felt adrift without the structure and purpose that his job provided. His recovery was slow, filled with visits from doctors and the gentle insistence of rest. He spent his days reading and reflecting, his thoughts often drifting back to the bustling energy of the Harrison estate. The Harrisons, for their part, were uncharacteristically empathetic. They visited regularly, bringing flowers and warm wishes. Lady Harrison, in particular, was a frequent visitor, often bringing stories from the estate to keep Michael connected to the world he so dearly missed. Michael, Lady Harrison said during one visit, we've been keeping the house running as best as we can, but there's something missing, something you've always brought, your touch, your presence. Her words were a balm to his soul, reaffirming the bond he had with the family he served. As he lay in bed, Michael began to see his illness not just as a personal crisis but as a turning point. It was a moment to reassess not only his health but his approach to life and work. Weeks turned into months, and Michael's health improved steadily. He was eager to return to his role, but he had also come to realize the importance of balance in his life. The Harrison family welcomed him back with open arms, and Michael resumed his duties with a renewed sense of purpose and gratitude. His near-death experience had changed him. He approached his work with a newfound appreciation for the delicate balance between duty and well-being. His charm and grace were undiminished, but now they were imbued with a deeper understanding of life's fragility. In the end, Michael Kalkors's return was not just a return to his role as a butler, but a return to the very essence of what it meant to be a part of the Harrison family. His near-death experience had, paradoxically, brought him closer to life. It had reminded him of the fragile beauty of existence, and the profound impact of every small, graceful act of service. And so, with a heart that had been both tested and healed, Michael continued to orchestrate the symphony of southern charm that was the hallmark of his life and work.